Hi everyone, this is Mr. Neil Wright, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for tuning in to my latest video. The patient in this procedure attended with bilateral occluding earwax. The term bilateral infers to both ears. If it's just the one ear, we would call that unilateral. And we've just started off in the right ear. Um, the consistency of the earwax between the right ear and left ear is completely different. So in the right ear, which is the ear we're in at the moment, the earwax is a very soft, mushy consistency, similar to uh, mashed potato. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you, you would uh, be aware that I quite often uh, make food comparisons with the consistency of earwax. I think it's just something that we can easily relate to. So you can see how mushy this wax is, uh, and I'm just using uh, micro suction with a standard zone suction probe. And what I'm trying to do is elevate, uh, retract this wax off the canal wall. Quite often uh, with earwax, we have a layer of keratin, so dead skin, that envelopes the, the wax, but it, it's also adhered to the ear canal. So dead keratin is similar to double-sided sticky tape. It's one side, the inside bit sticks to the wax and the outer part of the keratin is still adhered to the ear canal wall. And if we can loosen that, it just helps removing the plug of wax that much more easier. So I'm just at the base of the ear canal here. I'm trying to lift this off the inferior canal wall. And you can, Part of the problem with soft mushy wax rather than suctioning the wax the suction probe itself just makes an indentation in the wax now it's very difficult to use any other uh, instrumentation an ear hook or forceps as wax is just too soft with a jobson horn that would be uh, partly suitable but because the wax is fully occluding and extending from the entrance all the way to the eardrum the jobson horn will only be uh, effective for the more lateral layer of wax near the entrance as we go more medially on the bony sensitive part of the ear canal we want to avoid making contact with the ear canal wall wherever possible and it's, it's not um, always possible to make that avoid that contact with a jobs and horn so what i've done i've just instilled some olive oil earwax drops what i find olive oil does it changes the consistency of the earwax. It somewhat binds it together. Again, another food analogy for you. Um, I always compare olive oil during a procedure has the same effect on earwax as an egg does in a, a fish cake recipe, for example, or a potato cake recipe. It binds all the ingredients together. So what the olive oil has done here, it's, it's done a couple of things, actually. It's helped to lubricate um, the ear canal wall, but also... The inside of the suction probe. So if we do get a part blockage, the, the oil helps lubricate the wax, travel up the suction probe. And it's binded this wax together. Um, so when I do remove it, it comes out in larger chunks, which is always helpful. So again, I just set the base of the ear canal, just trying to lift this off the canal wall. Now on the posterior part of the ear canal. So when we say posterior, we mean the back part of the ear canal. Now this is the anterior part of the ear canal, which is the front part. I've just gone back to the base, the floor, the roof, uh, sorry, the, the floor of the ear canal. And the top part of the ear canal, we call that the roof or the superior part of the ear canal. So we're probably about halfway there now um, the average ear canal length is approximately 2.6 millimeters from the entrance extending to the eardrum so we're probably about half one and a half centimeters into the ear canal so we are on the bo bony portion now the outer third of the ear canal is cartilaginous so it's semi-flexible semi-sensitive we can apply a bit of pressure um, and on the outer third of the ear canal that's where you have your um, hair follicles um, and attached to the root of the hair follicles are the ceramunus glands, which secrete an oily sweat, and also the sebaceous glands, which secrete an oily lipid substance called sebum. And those, the oily sweat and the oily lipid substance combines with dead skin that migrates from the eardrum outwards to form earwax. In most people, the earwax naturally migrates out of the ear by itself without any assistance. So as that dead skin dies and sheds, 
um, from the eardrum, it migrates sideways laterally out of the ear canal towards the end entrance, similar to a conveyor belt. And as the skin is migrating in this conveyor belt motion, any wax that's sitting on top of the skin also comes out uh, with the dead skin. So it's got this remaining plug of wax directly on the eardrum, and it's actually lodged in the anterior recess. So the ear canal, probably about half a centimetre away from the eardrum, you have a narrowing of the ear canal, and then the ear canal protrudes back outwards, and that creates typically two distinct recesses, the anterior recess, which is to the front part of the ear canal, and an inferior recess, so that creates a trench, almost a crater at the base of the ear canal. And quite often you can get wax that's lodged both in the inferior recess where I am now and also in the anterior recess to the right. And it can be quite tricky to remove, especially when the wax is quite soft and mushy like we have in this patient. So I'm just using a fine end gauge. A fine end gauge is an extension to the standard zona suction probe, so it's a narrower smaller suction tip so although it um uh, it's less powerful it's also less noisy which is always um recommended when we work closer to the eardrum because micro suction can be a bit noisy um i find a, a fine end gauge also provides me with more precision so for uh, more some more of the delicate procedures i perform near the eardrum i much prefer a fine end gauge. However, as was the case here, that fine end gauge just wasn't powerful enough. So I had to I had no option but to resort back to the standard zona suction probe. And you can see um it's quite a startling piece of soft wax that I've managed to extract. It didn't look this big until I suctioned it off out of the anterior recess and inferior recess. So yeah, fine end gauge has its advantages, but sometimes it's just not powerful enough. So I think um, the eardrum is all fully visible. So it's all intact. You've got a couple of, uh, you've got some wrinkled dead skin on the eardrum. So the eardrum has three membranes. The outermost membrane, which is facing us, uh, what we call the lateral membrane, is the same skin that lines the inner two thirds of the ear canal. So that skin's uh, less than 0.1 millimeters in thickness. The middle layer of the eardrum is a fibrous layer with connective tissue. And then the inner layer of the eardrum, so um, the innermost, which you can't see, we call that uh, the middle ear mucosa membrane. So mucosa is a, a membrane that secretes mucus. Um, I just went, I finished off the right here with a fine end gauge, actually just at the base. There was a bit of um, soft, wet wax. Now into the left ear, you can see that this wax is a different, completely different consistency. The reason for the difference is the patient had been using some softening drops, um, earwax drops in the right ear. I believe they used um, hydrogen peroxide. Uh, in this ear, they didn't. So the wax is still a bit sticky, but it's more, um, it's holding its shape a lot more. Um, I'm just trying to wriggle this plug of wax out using micro suction. And um, this plug of wax. Does, it does extend quite deep. So I've reverted to uh, St. Bart's ear hook, just trying to get into the core of this wax, into the middle section, and I'm just slowly bringing this forwards now. And you can see the wax further into the ear canal, it's a lot darker. So it's been there longer, it's oxidized. And just clawing this out slowly but surely. And that was a lot quicker and easier procedure. So the eardrum's nice and healthy. I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Um, take care and speak soon. Bye.